butta giù tutto ok giù. che cazzo è almeno un'anta molla dentro questa velocità The day has finally come to mount the setup on the Abarth. We've got quite a bit of traffic ahead because it's out of gear and in Cernusco sul Naviglio and it's morning in Milan. This sucks. Let's go. Okay, perfect. We loaded the setup. My brother is also here with us. In that box you see back there is the trim. The trolley above has the video equipment inside. And I also had to pull down the seats because otherwise it wouldn't fit. Let's go from out of the way. Without wheels, it's impressive. There seems to be a slide. Here we have the difference. The old ones are obviously recognizable, old and new. The springs are obviously shorter. The shock absorbers also seem shorter. This wrench is used to adjust the spring extension. It's hard to show you exactly how to do it here, but know that this is the key to using it. This is the old spring that's been compressed to get the buffer out. Remember to compress it if you're doing it yourself. Otherwise, the buffer could shoot out and you could get hurt or punch a hole in the ceiling or it could get jammed inside your car. I'm curious to see how much lower it will be when we put it down and if it'll break our backs. The original spring, the new Bilstein spring with this shock absorber. You can feel that it's a little lower and it seems a little bit more responsive, but it's soft. In fact, it might even be softer than before. Well done. These are the measurements taken at the beginning when we had the original shock absorbers. So 61.7, 61.8, practically almost the same now. We have 59.5. So we have lowered it by almost three centimeters. While at the back, we are about two centimeters. We have maintained the standard, but it is definitely lower. You can see quite a bit now between the wheel and the bodywork in front, so much so that even at the back, which looked like an SUV, we now only have two fingers. We have finished this job they were very fast we arrived here practically at 9 and by 10 30 we had already finished everything and i mean everything and then i must also say as far as professionalism just as precision in the movement around the car i am someone who pays attention to details and maybe if someone puts their hand on the car and hits here he hits there with the tools but instead they were precise clean if you want a tip if you are in the milan area i am here in sonusco at forigiri pop in and as you can see in addition to to my Bartina, there are also cars that are a little bit more interesting, powerful and expensive.
time has finally come to try the Abarth on the track, even though the weather isn't great today. In fact, take a look. What a mess. Okay, so now it's time to test the Ferrari on the track. We'll set up all the cameras and see what we can do. Dear friends, we'll put on our helmets, get on our Vespa behind us, and Luca will show us how to drive to the little castle. We're here with Luca, our instructor for today, also a friend for goodness knows how many years. Good 488, let's use it. Oh my gosh. Okay, you see, there's still the handbrake on. It takes itself off. But I mean, think about it. Please tell me the racing lines that are important, like first gear, second gear, yes, beautiful the curve and then go into the secret passageway Madonna how do you put it in Madonna yes inside okay so I'll throw it in okay inside at this speed still free so far direction to the right okay gas oh my gosh oh my god It's time to try this new setup. Hoping not to get caught in the hail, right Luca? Let's do a lap, warm up a little bit here, and theoretically we should take a break when we go a little faster from 175, okay? <laughs> Yeah, but they're they're my brakes, so it's better not to slaughter them anymore. I'm starting to stop braking altogether. Now let's see how bad our brakes are. Oh man, I could smell that this was going to be a mixed bag. Let's go and check it out. The rotors were already scratched like this, and I've never taken this car on the track. Look at them. They were already like this before. We also have servo dust and the tires. Let's see. Let's see how the tires are. Look at Madonna. They were basically eating themselves. But you can't go on the track with the stock pads. It's not so much the braking. That too, but more than anything else, they just get tired right away. They just give out on you. How many laps did we do before they started going? Three before they began to fade, five in total. I mean, a track day with stock brakes just doesn't work. All right, guys, let's pack it up and head home. 
Well, friends, we went home and didn't do the lap time because we had two cars, because we were rushing around and it was about to rain and wouldn't have made much sense. However, I think it could be interesting in a future episode to do a time attack just to see how fast I can go with the Abath. I don't think I'll be able to make the best times compared to those made in the track battle with the Golf GT and Giulietta Veloci because they had 240 and 250 horsepower and the Abath has 180. But just out of curiosity, I think it's interesting. If we make other upgrades, we'll also see not only the 0 to 100 like we did last time, that was actually the 60 to 130, which was more important than the 0 to 100. But we'll also see the lap time, the setup really changed the car's dynamics. We got it to the maximum softness, and despite everything, it is much more effective than before. You can really feel that the car is flatter and has less roll or understeer. Surely if we harden the setup to the maximum with what we have on now, since it is adjustable, we'll have even better performance later. We'll see what to do. Thank you for staying here with me and we'll see you obviously in the next video. Let me know in the comments of course what you think about it. Cheers.